then look at what other people have to face. Every successful person has faced difficulties in their life and career. My guests will share with us the challenges they have overcome on the road to success. Every week we'll follow their story right here in Life with me, Patty Boule. Hello and welcome to Life with me, Patty Boule. My guest today is Simon Withington. He is award-winning freelance television producer. Simon, I've known Simon for many years. We've been friends, haven't we, for a while, and you are the nicest person on television, that's all I can say. Well, that's a tough act to follow, I think, that, that <laughs> intro. <laughs> no, we've been friends for years, yeah. and, uh, and uh, we've always had a very special relationship, haven't we? So, we certainly have. Yeah. It's that smile that you have that makes me want to eat you up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank and you. Squeeze, 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 <laughs> squeeze. You know, but Simon, you've done everything. You've produced many high profile shows with big name TV, ITV, Thames Television, Objective Productions, US Networks, NBC, TLC. I mean, good heavens. I went to your bio and I thought, how old are you again? <laughs> <laughs> tell well, me, tell me from your childhood how it just all this came about. I've always had a love of TV, and I think that my first love of TV came from watching people like you in the <laughs> 80s. I said to you yesterday, on the box, in the box, on celebrity squares and on oh, punchlines yes. and those shows. Mm -hmm. And it was growing up watching those shows that made me want to work in TV. I just loved the glitz and the glamour and the razzmatazz. And um, uh, I sort of, as a teenager, decided to follow my passion uh, of carving out a career for myself in TV. But when I did a TV production degree at Manchester Metropolitan University, the thing that they instilled in us is, you probably won't make it. So it was kind of like a realistic <laughs> view because lots of people don't make it, of yeah, course. That's true. But you've just got to work hard, be unique, um, kind of, you know, prove yourself, um, be as nice as you can to everybody. Yes. That's a very important one as yeah. well, and um, and follow your dream really. So, I did my degree and uh, started out at a company called Talk TV, which was run at the LWT Studios in 1996. And there were some very special people there. There was uh, Sasha Baron Cohen getting his first break in TV. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Presenting a, a kids show and coming out with some pretty inappropriate stuff, actually. I must say. <laughs> As he does. <laughs> yes, we could see an early sort of like inkling of his characters coming through on this kid's show. And uh, he was always getting into trouble. Uh, and Natasha Kaplinsky, who then went on, of course, to um, be a, an excellent newsreader and, and starring in Strictly and stuff. So it was kind of like a, an incubator for talent. We were all multi-skilled. We were all really young. And I had a taste of uh, television from both in front of the camera, actually. I did a little bit of, little bit of presenting in those days. And largely behind the camera. So I was doing a bit of floor managing, a bit of editing, a bit of camera work. Each day was different. And I think wow. that was the kind of spice of life, really, yeah, because it huh? kept it fresh. Yes. You couldn't get that kind of training at university anyway, even if you tried. It was invaluable. And I think, yeah. you know, when you do it, when you work in a, a in TV, it's good to know every job because then you know the capabilities of what's possible mm -hmm. uh, and what's what what you're able to achieve without people telling you no and and you having just to accept it you can kind of you know that what you, know, you can do precisely yeah you know when I first when I started in show business what I did was because I had come from Africa mm. to <laughs> England yeah and I really didn't understand what show business was so I learned to direct produce I produced a show big show cost yeah. me a fortune. Um, but I, I wanted to learn why everything works and why, you know, even the job the stage doorman does, why, yeah. the, you know, the usher, it's, I wanted to learn everything about show business. But show business is in your blood, isn't it? <laughs> because it's certainly in mine. Uh, yeah, definitely. I we don't say. do this necessarily for the fun of it. It's no. like, <laughs> come on, we have to do it, basically, don't we? Yes, so yes. That's the thing, yeah. You know, but I like to kind of look at the, the, the nice side of it. Yeah. Because there's always a nasty side. You know, there's the, 
Do you know, I was I was just thinking about this, and I think I I can't recall any bad experiences in TV, and I think maybe if you're nice to people, that's right. then that certainly helps. Absolutely. Um, and I have heard horror stories, and you <laughs> there know, are I'm sure you've stories. heard horror stories as well. <laughs> but I haven't experienced them. That's wonderful. It's because you smile through everything. Well, and you always see the best of everything. I mean, come on. I've known you for so many years and you you help. And you say to me, I, I wouldn't dare ask because I couldn't afford you. And you say, <laughs> Patty, can I <laughs> Patty, can I can I help you there? And that's incredible. I no, mean, nobody I, ever says in business it's take, 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 take. I love Nobody helping you, and especially now when you get to a certain level, you think, I want to give back as mm -hmm. well. So with your Bipada thing, I was more than happy to help you, and I think what you're doing is, is wonderful, and, and I think people should look at themselves at a certain time in their lives and go, come on, now's time to do something for somebody Precisely. else. Precisely. So, yeah. It's time to put something back. I met your lovely mother. Oh. Yeah, I met your lovely mother, and she, she's wonderful. Tell me. You weren't, were you an only child? Or I was. was. Okay. So I was uh, an only child, single parent family, but it wasn't an awful childhood, I must no, just say. No, of course not. You know, yeah. I had all the love of both parents from one parent. And um, on your previous show, you were talking to David about being an only child, David Grant. Yes. And one of the things that strikes me is what you what you don't have, you don't miss. So I never Precisely. really missed the love of a father in Precisely. that way. Um, but yes, I, I, I was destined to be a ballet dancer from a young age because <laughs> uh, I, I sort of um, had a creative flair from quite a young age. Um, and it was I can see you as a ballet dancer. Well, relatively turned out could, with yeah. the feet, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I think it was when I, I got to my teenage years that I felt that perhaps um, that sort of tough life of kind of like taking your body it's to the tough. extreme tough, is yeah. was perhaps not for me and maybe I took the easy path working in TV but I certainly if I would if I continue with ballet um, I may have been a success because there aren't very many boys that do it That's true. Um, but my heart was telling me television was the path so I was going to say follow your destiny and my mother always in spite of the fact that she would saved for um, you know worked all jobs that she had to work in order to get me to ballet classes and stuff she never once questioned my path and is a very proud mother at seeing oh, some of the her. things that yeah, I do. She I know. comes to all my shows. We, you I came know. to one of my yes. shows. And... I came to, it will be all right on the night. And I yes. think I'll come to another one because you've done a, many series of It'll Be All Right on the Night. And then you had me on when things, no, when talent shows go horribly wrong. Yes. It's quite funny how you put that together, actually. Well, I seem to specialize in doing blooper shows. Um, <laughs> after this, uh, I mean, it's, there's worse ways of making your living, let's face it. Yes, absolutely. Than watching people falling over. So, um, yeah, uh, after Talk TV ended, the wonderful channel with Natasha Kaplinsky and Sasha Baron Cohen, I thought, that's it, my career's over. And um, luckily, LWT redeployed most people within the company. So I ended up um, being a, a sort of junior researcher on It'll Be All Right on the Night. At the time, my mentor was uh, Dennis Norden. Dennis, yes. um, and um, he was instrumental in um, championing uh, his team. He was one of the few presenters that would uh, insists that we all took a bow at the studio recording oh, wow. for finding the clips. You know, he realized that the clips were the star of the show exactly. and that his team who had found them deserved to take some credit. Um, and uh, Dennis was um, was always sort of behind us and was was instrumental in ensuring that eventually I was promoted to assistant producer and then at the age of 28 um, producer. And in those days, I mean, it's not that long ago, but it's probably... 15 years ago, mm -hmm. the show was getting maybe 10 million viewers. That's right. And um, it was it was lofty it was lofty heights. I've almost had my career in reverse. I've had the best bits first, <laughs> <laughs> but I still love what I'm doing. And 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 that whole blooper show thing is kind of how I'm known. Well, you know, you say circles. you had the best bits first, but with the kind of person you are. Seriously, I think you're one of the people, which is why everyone calls you Mr. Showbiz. <laughs> because, you know, you've got such pizzazz. It's amazing. You're a producer, director, you edit, you, you do so many things. But you have this personality of a, 
a presenter. You, you're almost like someone who's in front of the camera, not behind the camera. So you've kind of done all round. And I think you say you do the best things first. No, are they going to come round again? Because if I know show business, it kind of goes, what goes round comes around. So it's yeah. going to come round again. Well, you never know yeah. when that next call is going to come. And Precisely. you had it recently, of course, <laughs> with the Marigold Hotel. Yes. And that was a, an absolute gem for you, wasn't it? It I mean, certainly was. Yeah. I was pleased to do it. When I got to India, I wasn't so pleased to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, yes, show business is in my voice, in my blood. But I don't like fighting for the camera's face, for the yeah. viewer. I don't like that. It's undignified. I think at a certain age. When you're young, you can nudge people away. But in my 60s, come on. <laughs> You've <laughs> you just know, got to like, be natural. And I yeah. think the camera finds you. Precisely. And, you know, I, I was just, you know, to me, I thought, I'm in India. This is fantastic. <laughs> I'm going to have fun. <laughs> you know, um, Simon, there's so many things here. The wet royal wedding. Oh. Kate and <laughs> William. That was amazing. Uh, uh, sometimes you get a call and you think, oh my goodness, I've just got to work on this. And this was an amazing one for uh, TLC Channel in America. We did a live show from the ITV studios in London. Yes. And it was actually, I think, was it four hours long or five hours long? It was a very long show. And of course, you can't have any rehearsal because you don't know quite what's going to happen. What's gonna happen. Uh -huh. What we did know was the mechanics of the day, what was going to happen in terms of, you know, um, Kate leaving um, the hotel to get to the um, abbey and, and mm -hmm. uh, cathedral, sorry, and all of that stuff. But after the wedding uh, was like, always in the back of my head, how are we going to fill the last two hours of the show? <laughs> I know yes. it's all very well watching the wedding and enjoying it and and all that business, but um, I had a few things up my sleeve uh, as as little little tricks to fill the airtime afterwards. Um, I was like, what will they be eating uh, as canapes at the reception? <laughs> I mean, it was silly things, and I brought people out with what canapes they might be eating, but um, it was an amazing experience. You realise you just bought television for me because sometimes <laughs> I think. Oh, for goodness sake, now they're just dragging in that. Now I know why. Yes. It's because they've got no, hours of... Yes. <laughs> Filling air time, oh, basically. Oh, yeah. Tell me I'll never be the same again. <laughs> yeah. And recently I was... Um, I, I did another royal wedding, the, the Harry and Meghan royal wedding, but this time it was for Yahoo! And it was streamed live around the world on the internet. So wow. that's that's the difference in sort of the years, that's I guess. Right, you know, the original one was on TV, but this next one that I was asked to do was 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 live streaming. So the, the future is, I guess, people watching I think on the, their the, phones. The, the future is, is in streaming. Yeah, I think because you know the owner of Disruptive TV mm. explained to me that um, it doesn't take as many people now you know, to present this program yes. that we're doing. So I think the future is definitely in streaming. And the technology enables us, of course, to do the things that we couldn't do years ago. I mean, mm -hmm. I think now about some of the things that I self-shoot myself and the camera cameras are so affordable now, whereas if we were doing this sort of 15 years ago, it would cost like 30,000 for each camera. Exactly, so, you know, that's very true. Yeah. But tell me, what's the biggest challenge you faced? I think the biggest challenge for me as a freelancer working in TV is probably the same thing that you face mm -hmm. as a, an actress and singer, um, is the uncertainty of the business. It's one of those things that, you know, each it changes day to day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to tell you about this at all. It's, it's um, oh, you know, and, and there are things that I've done to kind of sort of plan ahead and stuff yes. in order to be sensible uh, sensible about things but um you know it's sort of feast or famine but i've been very lucky in that i've had sort of 22 years of almost solid employment so i've been wonderful. lucky but i know that one day and i don't know when it's going to be if only we knew when it was going to be one day it's going to slow down so but that's you know. what makes it exciting yeah but I think, you know, just you do many things. So I, I suppose you, you do what I do. You kind of cover yourself. Yes. I think you know? actually having a few st strings to your bow really helps because yes. I, I'm a producer. Yes. But if I just said all those years ago, all I want to do is entertainment shows in the studio, 
then I wouldn't have worked at all. Precisely. So because I self shoot and edit and, you know, I can be I can adapt myself and I occasionally do corporate videos. Last year I did my directed my very first commercial for Pimlico Plumbers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, talk about an unlikely thing to do, but I made plumbing interesting. That's very good. <laughs> so, I met the owner of that company. He's a great there. guy. He's lovely. Yeah, he's Are not you... too keen on Brexit, mind you. Have oh, you seen bless. his posters? <laughs> no, no, I haven't seen his posters. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, he's quite a character. He is. Yeah. So that was really good. So I really? think you know, having having sort of you know. Irons in fires and options is definitely the way forward for anybody that might be thinking about carving out a career yes. in TV. You pitched and had a program commissioned. I know you mentioned it to me, which, you know, it had 3.7 million viewers on yes. the first. Yes, I did um, a show, which is another very unlikely one for me. Patty, when I tell you this, you will probably fall off your chair. <laughs> <laughs> it was called World Cup Epic Fails. Now, what does a showbiz boy know about football? World Cup. <laughs> well, that, that's a very good question. Um, but um, I'll tell you a secret. At the time, it was actually pitched as another show. Um, it was meant to be game show epic fails. And the commissioner okay. at ITV said, look, we've got a little hole in the sh schedule for the World Cup. Change it to World Cup and we'll, we'll put it in again. Wow. And that was like a little inroad. Mm -hmm. um, and we made the show and um, Angus Deaton hosted it. And let me just say... Angus Deaton's the sort of person that when he reads a script because he's so dry, it just comes alive. And it was just a really funny, <laughs> dry show. And I had people, I like following my shows on Twitter when they go out, because yeah. it's interesting to see what people say. And the sorts of comments that people were making were, I don't really like football, but I like this show. And I think that's sort of at the back of that my is. head with everything I do is I want to make generally entertaining Precisely. shows for the public. So. But it is called entertainment, it for is. goodness sakes. I think we've lost a bit of that, haven't we? Yeah. Well, people are concerned with with audience and demographics yeah. and, you know, yes. getting youth on the screen and all of that uh, business. Yes. And ultimately, at the end of the day, for me, I'm led by what I think I would like to watch on TV mm -hmm. and also what I think perhaps my mother would like to watch well, on TV exactly, as well yes. as my young cousin yes. you know it's it's got to be across the board so but uh, you know I mean uh, mostly you can't get anything past them if it hasn't got some kind of edge yes and uh, it worries me that young people their mindset is being trained everybody wants their 15 seconds of fame mm. or, or somebody they, the girls want to be wags you know i mean this amuses me you know what do you want to do for a living well i think i'll just find a, a footballer marry him have two children keep his money i'm going so you think that that many around have you have you counted <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable so it's that's what television does or they want to stab somebody in the back so they can get on television. Or be on a reality show or something like that. I think if you start with a talent, and that's the, probably the most crucial bit of advice for anybody, is if yes. you start with a starting point of a talent, uh, then you've at least got somewhere to go. I don't know, where do you see, um, do you think television, well, streaming is coming and it's going to really compete, television. But are they ever going to lose this reality TV thing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's 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 all about reinventing the wheel, isn't it? I guess yeah. you know, um, commissioners find glory in coming up with a new and original idea, but things that seem original aren't necessarily that original. There well, hasn't exactly. really been a groundbreaking idea for a long time. Precisely. They're all variations on a theme. So. As they say, there's nothing new under the sun. No. Yeah? I'm going to, listen, this is, I wanted to talk to you, this is, <laughs> I've never skimmed pages like this. Okay. Wedding TV. Yes. <laughs> That's when you came and you were working for Wedding TV when yeah. we met. We met first at Wedding TV because, um, my boss, Tony Prince, one of the best bosses that I've ever had. He was the royal ruler on Radio Luxembourg. Yes. And um, he was an investor in Wedding TV, which was a channel on, on, on Sky. It ran from 2007 to 2010. And we did a show called Celebrity Brides Unveiled, which was one of my ideas. And um, you spoke about the love that you have for your dear Stephen, husband, Stephen. Yes, yes. So that was when we first met. And there must have been some connection there because we've been best we've friends, been friends ever since. since. So, yeah. <laughs> but you've done, oh, my goodness. I'm a celebrity. 
junglicious moments. I love yes. it. Yes. You know, and, and then X Factor in China. Yes, that was an interesting one. I got sent to, sent to China for six weeks to make or supervise, I should say, the production of The X Factor. When um, foreign territories buy TV formats, okay. they have to be policed. Otherwise, they kind of they deviate kind of, yes. and just do it their own way. But oh, yeah. there are format points to hit in programs like The X Factor. Okay. And there's a very funny story of um, how um, this. there was this... Um, he was a prison guard and he'd come on and sung his heart out and was tears were running down his face mm. uh, because the song that he'd sung was about how his child, because he had to work in, in the prison for so long and long hours and stuff, and I think the prison was maybe some miles from his home, how his little child, who was a toddler, didn't recognize him, called him uncle because he didn't know that he was his father. And tears were streaming down his face and there was a f final shot with the child in his arms on stage and the judges came to make their choices. Now, most people that know television know that you put this guy through because the audience is oh, on his yes. side. The audience is on his side. They want him to go through. Mm -hmm. It's the classic underdog story. Mm -hmm. But the judges came to make their decision and they went, Very Chinese. no, no, Woo! yes, yes. So it was like he was going home, basically. So uh, it was it was not good. Uh, so so what, I had did to, you tell them? I had to halt production. I was like, trust me, this is one of your big stories. Mm -hmm. You want this guy to this go guy, through. Yeah. Um, so we halted production for probably an hour and um, of course the Chinese are very proud. They don't want to lose face. They lose face. So they didn't yeah. want to re-record it in front of the studio audience. So we had to con concoct a way of basically him then going through. It was it was just, it, it, it showed me the differences in the culture and the fact that these shows are made this way for a reason basically. So. I love that. Thank you yeah. so much, Simon. Thank you for being on my program and coming to speak to, to me on live. Thank you for having me. Well, out there, I, you know, I mean, you've heard what Simon said. Yes, you never give up on your dreams. And sometimes the path you take isn't where you're going to end up. And for goodness sake, be nice to everyone you meet because that's longevity. Okay? So don't become selfish and and greedy and just stabbing people in the back. Just be nice. We'll see you next week. God bless. Thank you so much, Thank Simon. Thank you, Patty. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you.